Sup Squad, it's Sage Banana, and today I'm going to show you how to make your very own indoor retro bright chamber. What you'll need is fairly simple. To start, you'll need a plastic tote, ideally two interlocking ones. Next, you're going to need some hydrogen peroxide. The cheap stuff from Walmart that's like a dollar a bottle works great. You're going to need aluminum foil as well as some sort of tape to secure the foil to the bin. I use duct tape. Finally, you're going to need a UV light source. Altogether, there's a retrobrite chamber. This is the particular light I use. I use it because it has internal fans that stop the time machine soup, so to speak, inside the chamber from overheating the parts and melting the plastic. I cut a hole in my lid to hold the light, but you can just suspend your light above the chamber. I only do this so there's not too much light leak in the room that I do my retro brighting in. Remove any stickers from the side of your totes. Take a good look at your aluminum foil. There should be a slightly matte side and a very glossy side. It's the glossy side that you want facing inside of the chamber. The reason that we put aluminum foil on these chambers is to bounce the UV light around so that it gets in all of the nooks and crannies of the pieces that you're trying to restore. If you don't do this, it can still work great. I've seen people just put things in a bin outside or put things in a bag next to a UV light, but I find that if you want an even finish without any random blotching of discoloration, the aluminum foil really helps with that. I should also mention that once you have your entire setup with the aluminum foil, don't look inside too long with the light on. It will make you feel super blind for a second. Almost like when you go outside on a really sunny, snow-covered day, and then you come inside and everything in the house looks really dark. It gives you that exact vibe. I nest my two bins together with the aluminum foil around the first bin. This way, I won't damage the aluminum foil later. And this is optional, but you can put duct tape around the rim to prevent more light leaks. Next, I fill my container with water and add hydrogen peroxide. Essentially, the more hydrogen peroxide you have to water in your ratio, the faster this process will go. But it is safer to use a lighter amount. This light has two different switches, two different light cycles. I usually use both of them, and then when I'm finishing my project, I switch to just a single light. And voila, a chamber. I bought a cheap, faded Indigo GameCube on eBay just to test out this chamber with. As you can see, it's pretty dirty and there's serious discoloration between the parts. Some are more of a navy than the indigo color that they should be. So if you want to fast forward to this time, you can bypass me completely disassembling the GameCube, but that's what I'm about to do. It's really important, and this probably goes without saying, but you should never retrobrite an item that has the metal or motherboard or any internal parts in it that aren't just plastic. The only thing you should be retrobriting is plastic. That being said, you are going to have to get familiar with disassembling systems or controllers or whatever you're working with. There are plenty of really great tutorials online for disassembly specifically of systems. I recommend using a step-by-step -step guide as you do so, so that you don't accidentally damage anything or put something out of place or put a screw that's too long through a motherboard. I use the iFixit walkthroughs to do my disassembly. As Shrek would say, ogres have layers, onions have layers, and I would like to add, GameCubes have tons of layers. Also tons of screws, so this whole process of disassembly for the bottom half of the GameCube takes 30, 30 to 40 minutes. The top half takes about 20 to 30 minutes to disassemble. And assembly does take longer than disassembly because 
you really have to figure out the nuanced ways that Nintendo specifically likes to build their systems together. It takes a little work, but it is really satisfying, like completing a puzzle when you finish. I don't really know what was going on with this power button, but it was really easy to clean up with some isopropyl alcohol. Now, before retrobiting any part, you should clean it first. I used soap and water and an old toothbrush and some q-tips to make sure that all of the dust and dirt are out of the parts. I do this for two reasons, one because you don't want any grody mess to prevent the light from hitting the part and retrobriting it properly, but also you don't want random dust and stuff floating around in your mixture because the water and hydrogen peroxide that you use is reusable for multiple projects. If you keep it as clean as possible, you can reuse it dozens of times. In cases like this GameCube, where the discoloration is not consistent, and by that I mean some places are more purple than others, it's a good idea to put your parts in order of most damaged to least damaged. So the first things I put in were the things that had the most oxidation, and I left them in for about 12 hours before adding the rest of the parts. This way I could be sure that all of them were going to work their way into an even color. Because there's a lot of water in my mixture, this process took about 48 hours. If you do only hydrogen peroxide, it can take two to five hours. But in general, I like to just leave it overnight to get the best possible results. So now we're just gonna put the whole thing back together and wow, beautiful. I once heard someone on Reddit call retro writing using time machine juice and it really is. It, it sends the system that you're repairing completely back in time. It's so satisfying to see the changes. People will say, what is the point? It will revert back to its oxidated state, and I think that it is still quite worth it. This process doesn't damage the plastic, and it really just breathes new life into old pieces. Anyway, that's all. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Please consider liking, subscribing, commenting. Any of that would really help me, and I'll see you next time.